Okay, I hope y'all enjoy this debate uh, between me and Ken. Uh, I'll come back and talk a little bit at the end of the video. Here we go.
never receive an invite to join your broadcast. Okay, I guess this gonna send you an invite. Do you see invite popping up on your screen? I guess that's how I did it. I pushed down on the bottom. I'm new to all this stuff. This is new on Facebook where you can do live stream to two people at one time. Give us a minute. We're going to work it out. Ken, I think I just sent you an invite. I said approve. Uh, allow. I pressed approved. I approved it. They'll receive an invite to join your broadcast. You should be receiving an invite. I wonder if Justin's gonna watch this today. Let me, let me find Justin. I'm gonna add him to you. You don't even. Give me that option.
I accepted it again. I don't know if Ken's went live very many times. Uh, I know you can see it on my end. Thanking your name, and I'm pushing approve. I mean, it says they will see the invite to join your broadcast, and I push add. So, you should be popping on the screen. Yeah, I got the request. I don't know why it ain't sending, or why it's not connecting on his end. He'll be on there with us. I think maybe he's going to go to his cell phone. It might be your uh, your webcam, Ken, Ken. But Jared said you're coming back. Some people that's on their internet won't allow them to be in the video. on that yeah it won't work that's that yeah so how's it going today it's gone okay i can barely hear you but let me try to turn you up a little bit I've got a lot of elements around me here it's okay uh -huh. all right About as good as it's gonna get, buddy. And you're fine. It's not lagging on my end or nothing. Okay, good deal. If it does, I'll interrupt you so you can let it catch up. All right, sounds good. So it says we got a few people watching. Can you still hear me? I can. Okay, well, whatever you did, whatever you're doing, then it cut the wind out, so it's pretty clear. Yeah, that's uh, what I'm trying to do is adjust it just a little bit. You'll have to let me know if it gets too noisy. And Such a beautiful day, I thought I'd sit outside. Yeah. Hey, Ken, you know something? You told me some fascinating stuff the other day when I talked to you about the history of the... Uh, Baptist Church. Yeah, there's, uh, I've been studying history for a little while, and a lot of people know, uh, you know, the history. It's not anything that's concealed, but, uh, you know, it's something that God has opened my eyes to um, just in the last couple of years. 
on on a lot of it. Uh, yeah, and I've been sharing it, but uh, it's not too well received. Uh, there's still a lot of uh, eye opening that the spirit's going to have to do, right? So uh, so we have to wait on God for that timing. But it's uh, it's seeds, right? We're planting seeds. Yeah. Well. Um... I did not know all that stuff because I really never studied that doctrine of how the Baptist church came, you know, into existence. And right. what you was telling me about uh, there at the end, how they had some doctrine issues and things like that, and how it was written down in, in uh, a Bible with some commentary and how they ignored it. Uh, hey, you know, not just the Baptist there. It's a lot of uh, denominations. Uh, it, it spread like wildfire, and yeah, and you know, anytime something like that is new and sweeps across the country, you know, you have a uh, few people that embrace it, and then you have those that are skeptics, and uh, it looks like this got pretty heavily embraced. Now, it did take a good hundred years, uh, you know, before it was just really. Uh, rooted in and now a common belief you know amongst a lot of people uh, you talk to yeah you said you come out of the Baptist uh, denomination right is that correct that is correct absolutely why don't you why don't you explain that to me again and also to talk about what you told me on the phone the other day about how all that got started and why you decided to leave that particular denomination. Sure. So you know something, Ken, uh, to be honest with you, uh, the Baptist denomination, uh, I, I think the Northern Baptists, they do believe in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of tongue, but the Southern Baptists down here where I'm at, they don't believe in it. So uh, I would like for you to explain their doctrine because I've never studied the, I know some of their views, but right. I've never really studied, uh, you know, why and who started it. and the, 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 so I, I mean, I would like for, to hear that again if you want to share it. Well, it's not, just, uh, it's not just about the doctrine itself, you know, because uh, you go, there's probably a, a Baptist church every, you know, 250, 300 yards. Of course, I'm yeah. being silly, but you know what I'm saying. There's, there's a lot of them. Uh, but as you go from one church to the next, you'll find that uh, predominantly there's different views even amongst them, right? So um, even though they have may they may have a uh, doctrinal statement on their website or uh, something that they believe in, hammered out uh, amongst the the individuals and the elders of the church, uh, there's still going to be a whole lot of uh, uh, you know, difference from that, from individual to individual you go to. Uh, what I had mentioned to you is the the belief in in uh, in, in dispensationalism, right? And uh, and that's what we kind of talked about. And and uh, when I'm speaking with someone, uh, it's real easy to start seeing those roots. Uh, the tenets, if you will, of dispensationalism as they come up, as they arise in a conversation. And, uh, and when you see that, it's, it's a spirit that's really hard to overcome because it's been, you know, rooted in uh, to, their, to their way of thinking, right? And, and I had it myself. And it was something that, uh, you know, uh, the Father had to show me himself because it, it's not something that just jumps off the page at you. And you wake up one day and say, wow, you know, was I really, you know, that delusional? Um, it, it, it stems from the fact that uh, whenever you talk about the word of God, there's no shortage on biblical commentary. And there's always someone out there that has something that, uh, you know, they want to say and they believe that. The fathers told them, and that uh, they want to write that down and publish it and put it out there as many people as they can. Uh, the, the thing that I, I, I 
I really believe is to really run that through the test, right? Uh, the scriptural test. If we talk about the Berean and how they really study the daily to see what the apostles are saying. Okay, Ken, you're starting to lag a little bit. Okay. Uh, I don't know, need to give it a minute to kind of catch up or what? Jenny, Jenny. Okay, now, I think now it caught back up. Yeah, so the Apostle Paul would, would bring something, uh, a word of God, uh, talking uh, to the people there about uh, the way and uh, the, the sect of which he was a part of, and, uh, and they tested it to the scriptures to make sure uh, he was telling, you know, the truth, right? Well, uh, what yeah, were they testing that to? Were they testing that to the New Testament that we hold today, or were they testing that to the the Tanakh, the word, the Word of God, the Old Testament, right? Uh, so, with that said, uh, that's what we have to do whenever we hear a word. And, uh, and you and I talked about that. You said God had given you some things and dreams and, and things like that. And, uh, you know, and you were absolutely excited about it. And you should be. When the Father gives you something like that, it's something that is just absolutely amazing. We just want to make sure we always test it to Scripture, right? We want to line up. Yeah. We don't want to be outside, you know, on a, on a little lot by ourselves. Sometimes you're going to be there. Uh, it's inevitable, right? You're not always going to be accepted. <laughs> but uh, well, yeah. if you're lining up with Scripture, then you can you can bet uh, that it's it's going to work out because God's with you. Yeah. Uh, you know, Kim, when I very first became a, a Christian and a true believer, now I come out of the non-denominational and really kind of Pentecostal belief system. Right. But, you know, honestly, you know, that was something that was happening younger in my life. And, you know, my heart was never there. <laughs> I missed as many Sundays as I could, you know. Sure. And uh, we were allowed, we had HBO and cable and all that kind of stuff. So we was allowed pretty much uh, free reign on the TV. Yep. And it wasn't hard as a young kid to figure out the codes to the cell phone. Sure. Uh, through, through all that, that really just led me away. Now, on my mom's side, she come from the Church of God in Christ. And my dad, being a hardcore Pentecostal slash non-denominational, right. uh, he, he always, I always grew up with them listening to like Kenny Copeland and you know, Jesse DePlanis, we went to those, uh, you know, those conven conventions they have there in Dallas. Sure. And we went there a few times. And also, too, my, my uncle, he studied at uh, Or Roberts uh, University. Okay. So I was, I did have some kind of biblical teaching with people doing massive dreams and visions and miracles. And that sure. did operate in our family church. But there was a split that came uh, between my uh, my grandma, she had five sons. Two of them were just are completely heathens, and it, I mean, one's on drugs, and the other one just out there. But she did have three good sons. So, and my daddy was one of them. He was spirit filled with the evidence of tongues. So was my uncle that studied at ORU, and also too now my. The oldest uh, son, which I believe he might be the oldest, which is my daddy's brother, he uh, he had a tendency about him that uh, he had all a bunch of money, and my every, all the family members listened to my dad. But when my other uncle moved off to study the, uh, at the ORU in university, the my brother, the, the older brother, uh, got really jealous and uh, and decided to. Uh, buy uh, the church through uh, putting a new roof on it and things like that and he began to, and the church was not being maintained so and uh, nobody really wanted to listen to him to my dad and him agreed that they'd be co-pastors and uh, 
my dad having respect for his older brother kind of let him take over and then he would invite my dad to speak whenever and then my dad never got a chance to speak but then over time what happened was through money because my uncle basically my is probably a millionaire uh, owns adam surplus there in, in athens and he had unlimited money to put stuff in and what happened was uh he decided to close that church down and build one on his property so therefore and nobody liked really listening to him and they had done got rid of the other church so therefore the I, church is completely I've down actually, i've actually met him been out there to that church yeah well i don't know if you and i try not to really say too much about him because he i heard a story one time that he was at a revival and this is what my grandma told me that he went and he gave a hundred dollars to this guy and this guy gave him a word of knowledge said being you done that at such a young age the blessing of god is always going to be upon you and yeah. my grandma she was a really hardcore praying woman and even though she still had a lot of the pentecostal uh, beliefs she right. was a praying woman she told me a lot of supernatural stories about how the one of the younger sons wouldn't mind and she couldn't catch him to whip him so she prayed that god would stop him and he right. went through there and, and decided he was gonna kick some glass and you know cut his foot all up and he couldn't run no more from my grandma oh. so i know my grandpa in the early days before they got separated he wound up running off with a piano player and having a kid. So that's how come my dad and all them stepped in. But anyway, what had happened was my grandma told us about a dream she had. And it was a dream about a pot. And there was stew on one side and human waste on the other. And then God told her the interpretation is, uh, you know, he's having an affair. And come to find out he was he was messing with the woman and had a baby and ran. And, and, oh. and you know, he's the one that bought the church. So then my grandma kind of took over, but she never had a job. So that's where my all the brothers stepped in to try to continue the church. And they really separated themselves from uh, my grandpa. So that's that's kind of a little bit about my history. Now, my my uh, my grandma on my mom's side and my dad always clashed because the Church of God in Christ don't have the same views as the as the non-denominational. Okay. So uh, their views are a lot different. And me and my grandpa, we talked about it at, at Christmas. And he's really old. And he kind of stutters and repeats the same words four or five different times. But he, what, what they get their doctrine at is from a place. And their, their doctrine is written down. And that's what they preach off of. Right. So off a manuscript. And I really believe you're going to be a true believer you don't preach off doctrine of somebody else. You don't copy, copycat somebody's messages. God is supposed to give you uh, your own doctrine, but that lines up with the Bible. Can I see yep. what I mean? Yeah. yeah, being led of the Spirit, He'll give, and that's called mysteries of the gospel, and that's in uh, that's in uh, you know where the armor, uh, Ephesians chapter five, I believe, but uh, right. or six, whatever. Right. So I think you can do that. You know, and and that's where you get revelations, you know, and you preach a right now word from God. So I really do believe relationship is really, really important. And I believe through the Bible says the Holy Spirit, which is a comforter, will teach you all things. I believe through that and the indoctrination of the high priest, Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, you, be, you begin to go from least to mighty. So... Uh, that's that's how I take my stance. Yeah. So, but uh, one supernatural encounter, man, really changed your life. You know, just having a breakthrough or maybe being healed. It really and can. it really makes you know God cares, and you begin to you begin to study and you begin to listen to Him speak to you, and and uh, the Bible says, "My sheep know my voice." So, uh, you know. You know the difference, you know. Uh, it's like something that's programmed in you, you know. Uh, I, that's key, right? The sheep need to hear his voice. And I yeah. think I'm chairs here kind of got into the uh -huh. sun a little bit. I'm going to sit down and move back over. But uh, I think that's key. You know, I think that relationship is key. You know, uh, not unlike what you're saying, I, uh, I too was raised up with the uh 
with a uh, godly family, and uh, I was uh, steeped in the Bible and, and uh, what I believe was sound doctrine at an early age. Um, I was trucking along and uh, had come up through the church, and now my teenage years, I went, you know, really wild and uh, got out and stayed that way for quite some time. When God finally got a hold of me again, uh, I had really surrendered to, to give him my life and uh, uh, surrendered to preach. And when that took place, it, it really, things started changing like you can't possibly imagine. Um, for quite some time, he'd been dealing with me and, and showing me things in scripture that I'd never seen before. You know, even though I'd read the Bible and been through it and had studied countless hours, uh, there were things that were just jumping off the page and, and he had a certain way that he presented that to me. Uh, he, he told me, uh, you know, flat out, why do you believe what you believe? And I had to answer that question several times. And it wasn't just about, you know, in general, about a, a necessarily a single doctrine or uh, that was being taught that particular day. But uh, it, it was as a whole that kind of became uh, really the question at hand every time the scripture was opened. And I think the biggest thing was, was that um, I was caught up in tradition that I didn't really understand. And, you know, that's, that's a heavy topic to, to discuss. Uh, people don't want to hear it. And it's really hard for those of us that, uh, that are still, you know, um, not really understand exactly what, uh, the father's will is and understanding the, the, what the gospel story is, um, it, it, it really can uh, be something that is hidden from people. Uh, but I know for a fact, if you seek God with your whole heart, he'll reveal it to you. And he may use uh, this this Facebook message here to, to do that. Uh, he could use you. He could use me. Uh, you know, he could use anybody, anywhere, anytime. I believe that. Um uh, but that's, uh, you know, that's something that he did, he worked in my life. Uh, my very first sermon that I preached, <laughs> Mark, was, was on traditions. And if you can imagine that, everybody was looking for a warm, fuzzy type first message. And I did something out of the back so hard. I mean, I, I got reprimanded right after the service by the senior pastor. <laughs> he pulled me to the side and he said, now listen here. Uh, we can't have that kind of talk no more. Now, you let that be. <laughs> You're not going to just come out of here firing off on people and stepping on their toes. He said, in fact, you didn't <laughs> on them. You broke them off. And uh, the, the, those people were hobbling out the front door. So he uh, set me straight and uh, and had a way that he did that. But, uh, but, you know, the question kept popping up, Mark. Why do you believe what you believe? And I had to answer that. And that's not something I took lightly. You know, I, I took a, a doctrinal statement that I, I saw one of my friends that uh, that uh, a dear man to me that was just instrumental in teaching me a lot of a lot of things. His name's Blair Bradley. He has a church on the Mississippi Gulf Coast uh, down around Gulfport, Mississippi. And uh, he's a, he's a radio evangelist and, and just an overall great guy. But. He had uh, he had mentioned to me uh, several times when whenever we were discussing you know the scriptures that uh, there's going to be some hard things you're going to have to cross over. It's not going to be all cake and ice cream, and uh, and that was certainly one of the things that I've had to had to deal with in my walk and in my journey. And I'm there now. Uh, you know I yeah. told. And uh, I grew up in the Baptist church, but I, I didn't stay there very long. Um, I sort of preached in the Baptist church, and uh, um, I stayed there until I made the commitment to God, I believe. And once he saw that, I tried every way in the world to go to seminary and, uh, and couldn't do it. Every door of the church was going to pay for it. I mean, I had people 
paying for it. I had you know, scholarship. I had the ability to go. I even tried myself two or three times, you know, to fund it. And and every time I had the money, just just couldn't. Nothing worked out for me to go. And uh, I'm I'm really kind of certain that God didn't want me to go down that road. Not because I don't believe in uh, in, in education or the system, but I believe God is is working the things right now. And he wanted me to have my heart and mind towards him on all things. And uh, not caught up in any type of position. So, uh, yeah. that. Well, Ken, you're kind of lagging just a little bit there at the end, so you might want to give a man to kind of catch up. Sure. Uh, now, uh, Ken, the hardest thing for for a lot of people to do that come out of many different denominations is for me it's kind of it's difficult but i'm having i'm i'm having success uh through uh the bible and through god inspiring in my spirit because i hear him so clear and you'd be surprised how sometimes when i talk to people that god will just tell me where to go he'll give me a verse right. and uh uh, he he lives he lives in me, you know. So, and when you can hear his voice, uh, talking to somebody or uh, going and researching it is not really that hard because you have a personal tutor that is willing to help you if you're willing to accept his view instead of man's. So, uh, and that's what the same thing when Jesus said, he said, "I don't, I'm not." Speaking of myself, but I, a father gave me a commandment and said, you know, tell them what to say, you know, in relationship. So, right. and, uh, same thing, same thing with all the apostles, you know, uh, when that one apostle, who was it, that John, he was in jail, you know, and uh, uh, Jesus told him uh, when he came to him and said, are you ready to go, uh, you know? Uh, and I'm going to send you there on the ship, you know. And through his being locked up, you know, that was the way God was going to give him a ride, you know. So, uh, but anyway, so I believe I believe sometimes God puts us in positions so we can uh, have him prepare a table uh, before us in the presence of our uh, naysayers. See, sure. so... And a lot of the time I have I have learned just through relationship that he will use their stuff sometimes. <laughs> so, you know, he'll he has a he has a way of getting their attention. So and if you allow him to do that, and the Bible says, you know, seek ye first the kingdom. So if you'll wake up every day and you're acknowledge him and put him first and you'll realize you've got to live and keep God's commandments, what happens is it brings you closer to God, and then you wake up, and you don't want your will, but you want his will, and therefore he's allowed to speak to you and tell you to go here, go there, and, you know, he begins to uh, give you, uh, you know, direct things to do that will help advance you, your life, you know, and you'll succeed. So, and you got to get on his, his, his plan. I believe so, that time i believe i was out of the wheel but uh i don't believe that's the case now yeah well i believe uh ken this is where dreams come in one, one time uh i had a dream and the lord told me it was so real and I'm, i've had similar dreams but one time he told me he said he said told me and he was explaining to me uh because the bible says there in job uh, when a man is in a deep sleep, that's when uh, he whispers in their ear and instructs man to keep their soul from the pit. So, and also the Bible says, too, when uh, God was mad at uh, King Saul, he neither talked to him with his voice nor through dreams no more. So, I believe dreams are a big part of relationship. And I believe sometimes there are people that are having dreams, but they don't understand them. But the reason why is because when God gave Nebuchadnezzar a dream, what happened was Nebuchadnezzar was in the world. So he had a worldly view of dreams, so therefore he didn't have a godly view of dream because the Bible says 
you know, the things of God are spiritually discerned. So, uh, if, and if you'll realize that relationship, God will, will put you in people's path that are spiritual that will help you, uh, you know, explain to you what your dreams mean. And, uh, sometimes, uh, God, if you're outside doing bad things, like a Nebuchadnezzar, God's going to give you a very weird dream because he don't want you to understand it because what he wants you to do, he wants you to ask somebody for help. So that's his way of, of kind of sending you to somebody else. And always, too, if you are in a Nebuchadnezzar state and having dreams and just be looking within a few days of you having that dream, and it's going to have such overwhelming desire. I promise you, God's going to put somebody in your path and they're going to be talking about a dream or you're going to meet them or maybe through a friend just within a few days. And you've got to take that opportunity and say, man, you understand dreams. Can you help me and yeah. uh, understand that? And that's the same way he did, uh, you know, uh, Joseph there. He put him in a position to interpret Pharaoh's dream. So dreams, dreams are a big part. But back to this dream I had. And in a dream, in Matthew chapter 5, it says you can be mighty or least in a kingdom. Now, I had a dream, and God explained it to me like this. And this is his words, not mine. He said, uh, explain it to people uh, that it's like a test. He said, sometimes you can get a D and barely pass and still, uh, you know, consider yourself a Christian, but you're borderline Christian. But then you, there are, then there are some people that get B's and A's, and they're considered, uh, you know, very smart and mighty in the kingdom. So there's a level, and just because someone has a view, maybe they might live a lot of the Bible, but maybe they might not eat according to the Bible, or maybe they might have something they're dealing with, but they still live majority of the Bible. We cannot sit there and consider them a wicked person because they're sinning in one area of their life. But what our job is, is to get them to the next level. we got to tutor them up, and it's up to the people that are higher in the kingdom to, to reach down and grab those people and uh, say, hey, this is the way. And through relationship and through doctrine, if they're not willing to shut their mind to uh, your, what you're trying to say and teach them, you'd be surprised how much more they'll grow in the spirit. But right. uh, the reason why, uh, and you know, and I, I don't, I don't trash uh, uh, Pentecostals. Uh, the, and I, I know they're in the kingdom because one, one thing God said they were spirit filled, and that, and that, that's in the Bible too, in John uh, chapter three, one through eight, and it's never preached on. It's always John three sixteen, but they don't never preach, you know, uh, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. But anyway, John one through eight said you gotta you gotta be born in water and born in the spirit. So, and God told me, He said, it's like this right here. Here's the order of the church. He said it starts with the Pentecostals because one thing is they they don't have they believe Jesus is God instead of Son of God. But then he, he wanted to compare it to me like the temple, and he told me he said look at it like the man, the man made temple that I've done away with. You know, when it, when you when you sin, you had to go to a man that is a priest, and Jesus took over that position. But here's what man's doing: man is still believes Jesus is God, so they consider, uh, you know, they're going to him. So they're still going to the high priest. So in order to get straightened up, Jesus will straighten you up, and if you're willing to listen to him, he'll take the time to speak to you, and he'll begin to educate you and put you in people's path, and he'll. You know, you'll have the Holy Spirit. But then, then he told me the next two stages was the assembly of God and the church of God. And the reason why is because they take the view that uh, of the kind of like the all equal. And yep. God told me, he said, it's okay. It don't mean they're bad. He said, what the deal is, least they're acknowledging God. And they're not saying Jesus is, they're saying Jesus is equal to God, which is okay, but they're still acknowledging the next step. So it's like they're looking at the next step. And they're almost ready to take that next step. So that's what he told me. He said, then you got the non-denominational group. He said, what they believe is they separate them all, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Well, then God told me, he said, now they're willing to take the next step and work through doctrine and through visitations and stuff like that. And through education, we're going to get them there.
And then he said they're just a kingdom minded people, you know, because a non denominational group does believe in the kingdom and so does the assembly of God. So God's always got them looking towards the next step. See, so that and through that, you you can uh, you'll if you'll kind of understand it from that point of view. And that's how come it's really not our job. We need to learn. We need to speak against sin. And uh, we need to correct people, but also, too, we don't stomp on them. What we want to do is we want to help them, and you always need to encourage them and say, hey, I'm willing here. I'm willing to help you and get you to that next level. And sometimes they'll just get mad and, you know, tell you to leave. But the Bible says, if you know, if they offend you, you know, if your brother offends you, forgive them seven times uh, 70. So, you know, you're supposed to forgive because you got to realize sometimes the devil does get a hold of them and run you off. But you just be persistent. And that's what and that's what I had a dream about not long ago. And I'm dealing with my my sister right now that is having lots of trouble and hears uh, voices and stuff like that. And God told me, he said, I'm going to heal her. But you also got to start asking people to pray for her. And also, too, and, you know, there's been times that she has uh, called the cops on me and kicked me out of her house when I was trying to clean it and. You know, it just goes on and on and on, but I still went and picked her up before she was homeless. And I, and I, instead of, you know, trashing her, and I'll do that just about from uh, many people I have done that. And you have to forgive. And that's why in the Lord's Prayer, He said, you know, forgive your debtors and your trespassers, you know, and uh, advance the kingdom, thou kingdom come, you know. So that's where, that's where, uh, I'm coming from, and believe me, I, I'm dealing with a lot of issues uh, that you are, but I'm well-seasoned. Uh, I was shunned when I very first uh, left the side of the bathtub, and yeah. I mean, I just started having a relationship, and my family disowned me, uh, my relatives, you know, every one of them disowned me, uh, you know, I've had jobs uh, try not to pay me. You know, uh, and it wasn't just, I've had the devil, and the reason why, because I really do believe that there's a prophecy on my life, and it's well known that uh, the Lord told my uh, daddy, and anytime that you have a visitation, and the devil knows uh, that there's a prophecy that's going to come to pass in your life, the devil automatically tries to attack that. He tries to put a stop to it. So, in my, and I was out, and I was I was uh, probably, uh, I was about 22 years old, and I was a really bad guy, you know. But anyway, I was I was in a town, and my daddy called me. And it was, it was about two years before he passed away, and he told me. He said, son, I was at work at the airport today, and uh, I met this stranger on the bus, and this stranger come out and started talking to me, and he... he Begin to give me a word of knowledge and word uh, prophesied. He said, he told me about, he didn't know that you existed, but he told me, he said, God said you have a son. And one day he's going to straighten up. Don't worry about him. He's going to be mighty in God and mighty in business. And uh, also, too, I've had that word before, uh, you know, uh, back in when I was about 18 years old. So people that have uh, them, the callings on their life, you know, maybe you might be a musician or maybe you might uh, be a talented artist. What happens is the devil begins to pervert your uh, gifts, your talents. He begins to get you and make you sing that satanic music instead of the godly music like you're supposed to sing. Maybe you're an artist and what happens is that God begins to pervert your artist. Maybe you're supposed to go help draw stories and do nice cartoons. He begins to pervert your art. Your art your art and begin to, you begin to put tattoos on people. So anytime there's a calling on your life, the devil really, you know, he really tries to uh, interfere. And that's how come uh, God got the kingdom going and the fine folk ministry. Because, and if you'll let him, he'll put you next door. He'll put you in that place at Walmart where that person's working as a cashier or or maybe they're out in the parking lot buying groceries and God tells you to go up and, you know, begin to give them words of knowledge, you know, and, and, and prophesy to them. And God will begin to send you places where uh, you can uh, give those people uh, uh, a lift up because maybe they got offended and, 
and uh, they couldn't make the next step, and they got mad and left, you know, because, you yep. know, Satan put them in a denomination that trashed them instead of getting them to the next level. So that's how the Bible says don't get offended. So, I think, and it's really, it's really important that, that people that are listening to us, you know, just because you might not agree with somebody, the, don't get offended and not listen no more. Always be willing to have your mind open to it so you be, you'll be able to go to that next step. You know, and I've had a lot of people block me because of uh, they disagree with something I said, but that's not the answer. You sure. know, the answer is get on here and let's talk about it, you know. Sure. Or maybe call me and let's have a discussion about it, and uh, yeah. we can go see what the word says. And you know, the Bible says you know them by their fruits. See, so but anyway, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Ken. I think you're you're not lagging anymore. No yeah, I was just saying. You know, I think that same thing. You know, I believe that He'll put you in the right place. And you know, I've always, uh, you know, I've well, I mean, I, I very seldom have ever wondered and questioned you know what what something meant because god's always given it to me you know i believe if you're seeking him uh above all that he'll reveal himself to you and uh you know i i don't know why he's revealed you know the series of things that he has to me uh right now other than just to get my my family ready personally and the people around me but um he's given me some really good insight into prophecy i believe and uh he's shared with me some things that that uh, that i believe right now is taking hold inside uh the, the body right i believe there is going to be that division not unlike what you were just talking about but i have a little bit different uh take on it whereas um i believe there are seven churches and you're going to find yourself in one of those seven churches. Now, where do you want to be? Well, you want to be in the Church of Philadelphia. And you can read a bit about these churches starting in the, the very front of the, the book of Revelation. And uh, there's seven churches there that, that, that I believe had a, a very prophetic uh, significance, as well as, you know, they were literal churches in, in John's time. 